It's got power, it's got agility, it's got big attacks, small attacks, two modes of play, it's got four wonderful styles of Monster Hunter Cross. There is pretty much nothing bad I can say about the Switch Axe. It was my choice for going through the village in Monster Hunter Cross and a fine choice for anybody else looking to be aggressive because for this weapon, the best defense is a great offense. Welcome to my tutorial on the Switch Axe. Let's jump right in. Because all the other hunting styles are based off the guild style, we're going to be looking at that as we go through each of the different moves you can do. Okay, when you start out, just press X and you will draw your weapon, but that's not really fun. So if you're moving by pressing forward and you hit X, you'll do your draw attack. The draw attack is just a standard horizontal sideways swipe. Nothing to write home about, but it's not too long and not too short. If you press X while idle, you'll do the powerful but kind of sluggish downward chop. This is kind of a bread and butter move for the axe mode because motion value of 48 is pretty darn strong. It also has really good reach. You can chain it together with another X and you get both those moves together in a combo. Do them one more time and you get a triple combo. So go X. X and X again and we hit this wonderful upward chop. The upward chop reaches really really high. I tried to show it off here in the camera but I don't know if it comes through. But you can knock away monsters that are flying in the air with this thing. But do watch out you will knock up teammates into the air if they're near you. You can loot this combo infinitely as many times as you like. Okay there is one more X attack. Hold forward and press X and you'll do this really nifty forward moving thrust. But at motion value 19, it's not that powerful, but it's also really quick and allows you to close distances on monsters. You'll be using this move a lot if you're in axe mode. And you can combo this thing right into the wonderful downward chop and then all the way through the other X combo if you like. Okay, here is a lesser known combo that you can do with the switch axe, but if you hit X and you do it the second time, you can do the forward X thrust right after that side swipe. You can chain that together to make a brand new combo. One thing worth noting is that after every attack you can press B to do a sidestep. Sidesteps are really great for repositioning, making sure that you're always next to a monster and attacking them, but never unsafe. Now that upward chop can be gotten to three other ways. You can do an evade and X, or you can just press X and A to do it as well. The reason why this move is so important is start pressing A after that, and you'll start doing the chop combo. The chop combo as long as you press A lasts as long as you have stamina. So if you have stamina juice, you can do this thing indefinitely. There's 24 motion per hit, so it is one of the highest DPS combos in the entire game. Press R during it and you will do a very powerful finisher attack. This finisher does 3 different hits for 25, 30, and 40, so it is nothing to laugh at. You can do the finisher immediately after starting the combo as well, so you don't have to be at the end or in the middle of it. If you really want to, you can chain into the X combo right after the finisher as well, if you please. Okay, let's go downstairs and check out the jump attacks. So a standard jump and X will do a downward chop, which is pretty, pretty powerful at 40 motion. You can also do it if you're clinging onto a wall. You can jump off and hit X as well. They don't call it switch axe for nothing. Press R and you'll switch into sword mode. Now as long as you have over half that gauge oh, that is right above my name on the upper left there, you'll be able to switch from axe into sword mode simply by pressing R and back and forth. It's a pretty easy morph attack, but we'll go into it later, but there are certain ways you can morph mid combo. Now in sword mode, press X to do a standard downward swipe. It's worth 32. Now it's really worth mentioning here is look at how much you move forward when you do the move here. It's just a little bit, but it does help. Now hold forward and hit X, and you do the same move, but you do double the move forward. It doesn't look like a lot, but I'm trying to show it off here. This actually makes a huge difference if you're using the sword mode. Make sure if the monster is a little bit farther away from you that you're always holding forward and pressing X if you're using this move. Okay, press X one more time to do an upward swipe. It's not quite as powerful as the first attack, but it's not shabby either. And you can loop these things together for a combo that keeps you totally in place. 
Now please note that with each attack with the sword mode, your gauge starts to go down. And if it hits zero, which you don't want it to do, you'll do a very long animation and it'll send you back into axe mode. What you want to do is make sure you go back into axe mode before that happens, but when you do, it will say reload at the top. If you just wait or battle on axe mode, it will naturally go back up and then you can start using sword. Or, if you want, you can just hit the R button and it will do a little recharge motion here. It doesn't charge the gauge completely, but enough that you can go back to punishing the monster. Okay, let's go back to sword mode and check out the rest of the moves at our disposal. Now when you're walking around, you can do an evade with B and then press X and you'll do the upward swipe again. You can do this to go right into your swipe combos, which is the way to do it. With switch X, you're generally going to be chasing down the monster and swiping at it, so this is definitely a move you're going to be using quite a bit. Okay, onto A button. Press A button to do this back swipe. The back swipe is worth 28 and it's special because if you press A one more time after it, you'll do this really cool and powerful double attack. The double attack not only has fabulous power, but it only counts as one unit on your slash gauge up top. So you can use this thing quite a bit to do a lot of damage and also still maintain the amount of charge in your gauge. If you're not using this thing, you really should. It doesn't keep you in spot, so it may not be as good as breaking parts, but it is nice. You do have a standard jump attack here with the X. It's not quite as powerful as the axe, but it is useful nonetheless. And of course, you can do this thing from a ledge as well. Okay, onto some faster ways to get into sword mode. If your weapon is sheathed, press R, X, and A at the same time, and you'll go right into a draw attack. This is probably the most popular way that people do it. Okay, and there are two more for attacks that you can do into combos. If you hit forward and X with the axe to do the forward lunge, you can hit R to switch right into sword mode, as we're going to do right here. And then from the back swipe with the sword, you can hit R and go right back into axe mode. You definitely want to do this if you're almost out of gauge and you don't want to do that forced reload motion because it's really long. Okay, now there's one final explosive last move for the sword mode we have to cover. When you're in sword mode, press X and A and you'll do what they call the elemental discharge. Keep jamming on X and you'll do 7 hits followed by a massive explosion that will morph you right back into axe mode. It does take quite a bit out of your sword gauge on top, but it is fun and does a lot of damage. Please note that it does knock away teammates if you're online, so be careful of using it. Now if you start using this move and you notice that the monster is either getting out of position or you're not going to be able to finish the whole thing, you can stop it midway by just simply stopping the input or pressing B to sidestep out of it. Similarly, you can do an early discharge by pulling back and pressing X, which will force an early explosion. It'll downgrade it from 80 motion value to 50, but it's definitely worth not making a mistake if you know you're not going to hit it. You can also do this thing from the air simply by pressing X and A while in the air. And that wraps up guild style. Now a power file type switch axe will get 1.2 times damage on all sword attacks, meaning the axe mode really you don't use, and the elemental files are not that popular in this game, but they do give, I believe, 25% up when it comes to elemental damage. Now let's go look at the other styles and see what they gain and what they lose. The first one up, striker style. Now striker style does get one extra hunting art, which we'll cover a little bit later. Um, but let's check out the moves. So you still have your standard X combo, so that's all great. But now we'll notice one thing that we'll be missing. When you do the upward chop and you do your A to do the chop combo here, if you press R, you don't get any finisher. You can evade out of it if you have stamina left. Now for the sword mode, if you hit X, you do downward. Hit X again, you do upward. So that hasn't changed at all. However, if you press the A button to get to that wonderful double swipe, you'll notice it's gone. So if you hit A, no matter how many times you hit it or how you try, you cannot get the double slice. So basically, you're never going to use that A move unless it's to get back to X mode. Other than that, just start spamming on X to do up and down. Believe it or not, that's the only difference between those two. Next up is my favorite style, which is aerial style for the Switch Axe. This is what I used almost all the way through the story mode. Now the big difference here is hold forward and press X and if you notice you don't do the forward thrust. You're stuck in place with that sluggish downward move. Oh but don't worry they've come up with a new way for you to morph. After you do the upward chop hit R and you now have one new way to morph into sword mode. This is exclusive to just Ariel and Bushido so you will not be able to do this in Guild or Striker. I like it it's cool. However it does force you to commit to doing a jump attack so be careful if you're doing this online. 
Now it still has the downward XXX combo and believe it or not, they didn't take away the double hit from the A button. I'm really surprised because this is pretty much the most powerful attack you have on the ground, so I thought they would have taken it out. Anyways, I'm not complaining. Now if you try X and A, you're just going to do a downward slash. That's right, they've taken out elemental discharge and you can only do it from the air. Now for aerial jumps, if you jump on a monster, you'll vault off them. Now vaulting off, you can then do a morph attack, an axe attack, or a sword attack. But the cool thing about the switch axe is this is how most weapons work. You vault off and then you do an attack. That's how it works for axe mode, but sword mode is totally special. The vault move that you do is an actual attack and it's very powerful. So let's go see how it works here. If you jump up, if you notice that jump itself is an attack and then you can follow it up with the downward strike as well. So that's 35 for the vault and 30 for the downward. That is a lot of damage. Now it definitely helps to go see this thing in action. So let's go find a monster to abuse. So here's Young Cuckoo. A lot of people like to draw into sword so they can go immediately into doing sword damage. If you notice here, you can mount monsters pretty much as easy as you could with the Insect Glaive in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Because again, you're doing two hits instead of one and they're doing a lot of damage. So I would say that the ultimate mounting machine in Monster Hunter Cross is the Aerial Switch Axe. Now the way aerial attacks work is if you don't have any input on your circle pad, you'll just do a straight up jump and straight down. If you're holding forward, you'll move forward and so on. If you move over to left or the right, you can change your aim, which you definitely want to get used to. And here, if you hit X and A in the air, you'll do the aerial elemental discharge. Instead of having a motion value of 28 for the initial thrust, you get 40. So it's actually a little bit more powerful than the normal guild and striker version. Because when you jump on a monster, they might flinch because it's an attack, it does lead to a lot of opportunities where you can then use the elemental discharge. So I really like this style a lot. You can tell I like it because I'm showing so much of it off. <laughs> Now just because you can do lots of aerial attacks and they're very powerful doesn't mean that you're relegated to only doing the aerial attacks. Again this thing has the axe finish combo for the chop attack, it also has the double slash for the sword mode so there's a lot of stuff you can do here on the ground. Okay last but not least let's go over Bushido style. Bushido style is also really good for this weapon. So going out here, we're going to check out our basic moves. We still have our X combo attacks here. Nothing has changed. However, when you go into the chop combo, you'll notice that you don't have the finisher. So this is just like striker style. If you hit R, you're not going to do the finisher. So that kind of sucks. Okay, in sword mode, you lose the upward slice. So if you do XX, you do a downward and then the back and then downward and back. However, if you do the A combo, that is still intact, so you can still do the wonderful double slice. Which is nice. All it means is that it, you lose your ability to stand totally in place and just slash at a monster. But that's fine, because Bushido is all about moving around and evading and doing stuff like that. You still have your elemental discharge, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, let's go check out the Bushido evades. Okay, there are two types. There is one with the axe drawn. If you do this, this is where your finisher that you're missing from your chop combo has been given to this. Now that's great because you move forward quite a bit when you're doing this attack and the range is really wide. So this is a fabulous way to use Bushido Evade. Upward slice that we're missing from the sword is back for the Bushido Evade, but this time it's back as a brand new combo for the weapon, the double upward slice. It's 25 motions for each, so that's nothing to laugh at. And it's really easy to combo off of as well. So no matter which form you're using, it's definitely awesome to be using Bushido for this weapon. Now before you compare and decide which style you might want to use, it's really important to understand the three Switch Axe Hunter arts in this game. Now they all but killed the reason to ever go into Axe mode because Sword mode is not only super powerful, but even if you start to run out of your gauge, this energy charge skill will almost always be totally charged up before you're ever out. All you do is tap it, it does 80% recovery of your gauge and throws you right back into sword mode. Really good stuff. At level two, it does charge your gauge 100% and also gives you a 10% affinity boost. And at level three, it's almost broken. They give you not only 100% more slash gauge, but they also give you 30% affinity boost. Okay, let's move on to the next art called Demon Sword. 
Now what Demon Sword does is it takes the rest of what you have on your slash gauge and makes it start to deplete over time, not by attacks. So if you do nothing, it will go all the way down eventually, but it also means that you can attack pretty much and do whatever the heck you want without worrying about really depleting this gauge. At level 1, it also gives you a 5% attack boost for all of your sword attacks. It's not a big difference, but it's a small little one. For level 2, they give you 10% attack up for all of your sword attacks, and you know what? Even though it depletes a little bit faster than level 1, you're always going to be able to charge up energy charge before you ever run out. And guess what? These things stack. You can sit there and do energy charge and boom, you've got a full demon gauge number 2 all over again. Which is insane. It means that you will never ever run out unless you die. <laughs> Now, this stuff becomes seriously broken at number 3, because for this, you're going to get an additional 20% attack power for all of your sword attacks, and you can combine this with energy charge 3 as well for 30% affinity up, and no matter how you try to do it, you're going to be able to charge up your energy charge before you run out of demon gauge 3. So these two used together are extremely powerful. This is trans slash 1, honestly, it's probably the most useless attack in the game because it's far too long and it moves you around way too much. However, you do get a new finisher, I'm not showing the regular one, if you're in Demon Sword. Demon Sword definitely makes it a lot more flashier at the end and adds a lot more attack power. This is Trans Slash 2 and Trans Slash 3. I've used Trans Slash 3 a few times, it's very powerful, no one has been able to really measure how powerful because you move around way too much. Um, but if you're going up against like the last boss of the game who's really big and just stands there, this might be an art you might want to take with you. Okay, now that we've looked at the styles and we've looked at the arts, we have to discuss the differences between them. Okay, as we just covered, with two or more arts, you're able to put on both Energy Charge and Demon Blade. Those things stack, and they're stupidly powerful, so both Guild Style and Striker Style are both very, very good styles. The only difference between them really is if you don't use the Chop Finisher, or you don't use the wonderful double sword slash on guild style, then you're almost always going to want to go with striker style because that's the only difference between them and striker style does get one more art. Okay, now aerial style and bushido style both go down to one art, which pretty much means you're locked into using energy charge. There's no freedom. That being said, aerial style is wonderful. We've already shown off how the aerial attacks are super powerful and it really doesn't lose any of its key attacks as well. So aerial style I think is a definitely good trade-off for losing that ability to double those two arts together. Aerial style, tons of fun. And finally, Bushido style pretty much means you don't have to worry about your armor at all. Because if you've ever used switch axe, you'll realize that the most powerful skill and most useful skill is evasion plus two. The reason for that is that after every attack you can do a sidestep. So with evasion plus what that allows you to do is to really stick on a monster like flies on poop and just attack it, attack it, attack it. Now with Bushido Evade, I know they call it the perfect evade, but it's essentially giving you a free evasion plus three almost, straight out of the box. So the ability to have that is pretty huge. And it also covers what I think is a downfall of some other Bushido styles, where you might do the Bushido Evade, but you have to run back to the monster and then attack it. And if your attack doesn't have a lot of distance, you end up whiffing it. Um, but that doesn't happen with the axe attack because you move forward so much and you do that nice spinning finisher. And if you're really close anyways and you're in sword mode, it keeps you doing really high DPS attacks. So Bushido I think is really great if you're up against a monster that you know how to read the attacks. It's really fun. So that's really it. I mean there really is no choice between the four. They're all really good. I personally used aerial style for almost all of the game. Um, I'm now switching obviously and I'm using all the other weapons, but my main bread and butter for this game was Aerial Switch Axe, which I was not foreseen. It's just a lot more fun than I thought it would be. When it comes to Guild versus Striker for Switch Axe, it all comes down to your personal play. Um, I don't know. I mean, it depends. I mean, I like that double attack with the Guild style, but having one extra art for the Striker is also fun as well. I'll probably just end up switching between the two. And Bushido, again, if I'm up against someone like Nargakuga or Tigrex, I'm probably almost always going to go Bushido because it's easy and fun. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide on Switch Axe, and I hope you guys try it out. Um, if you have the Japanese version, or if they do, hopefully bring this game over to the West. Uh, until next time, happy hunting.